I don't know about you, but as a mother, I can survive on just five to six hours of sleep and sometimes even less. And I've always told people that sleep is a luxury, especially when you have kids. There's just so much to do when you're awake. But now that I'm entering my 30s, I've noticed that I'm getting more and more tired and I have to take more frequent naps. And my husband tells me that I've got sunken eyes, the audacity. But I also feel I get moodier these days and maybe a little bit angrier. So I met up with Dr. Renee Tan, a psychiatrist, and asked her if any of these could be due to my poor sleeping habits. And this is what she told me. Poor sleep or sleep deprivation, it actually affects neurotransmitters in the brain, uh, particularly serotonin and dopamine. The serotonin is a main neurotransmitter involved in mood regulations. Uh, so in poor sleep, serotonin is actually reduced. That's why uh, it causes anxiety and it, it also causes uh, depression as well. And dopamine, which is the main neurotransmitter in the reward pathway, so it is essentially affects our motivation to do things, our drive to do things. So when uh, there is poor sleep, dopamine is reduced, then you feel a more disinterest, like anhedonia, there's no drive to do things. That actually explains all that I've been experiencing. And Dr. Tan told me other signs of poor sleep are forgetfulness, zoning out, blank stares, and caffeine overload, which I'm guilty of. She also told me that adults need about seven to nine hours of sleep. Lack of sleep can lead to chronic stress, which then affects two major parts of the brain, the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. Now, Dr. Tan said that our gadgets aren't helping either. So research does shows that uh, blue light exposures uh, does disrupt the circadian rhythm, which is uh, you know like the inner clock that regulates sleep and wakefulness, and it also uh, affects uh, neurotransmitters like serotonin and increases cortisol, and causes uh, hyperactivity of amygdala as well, and as a result it disrupts sleep and our mental health. But I wondered if the effects of poor sleep and stress can go beyond mental health. And my friend Benjamin Limbs, a pharmacist, told me that it does. He said that chronic lack of sleep increases low-grade inflammation in the body because our body's stress hormone cortisol increases. And the worst part, he said that inflammation can also affect the gut lining, or as Benjamin called it, the leaky gut. So there's this concept coming out called leaky gut where inflammation around the walls of our gut causes our gut cells to open up a bit and so some toxins for example can go through our gut wall into our system more easily and that promotes inflammation. The other thing as well is sleep is very important for our brain because when our brain sleeps it goes through um, they call it a glymphatic system so this is a bit of a new concept but it's basically helping to remove waste in our brain and helping our brain to organize. So having that lack of sleep over a long period of time can cause problems to this system. So what can we do beyond the basics? Well, Benjamin said that dark chocolate helps because it boosts endorphins. The body's natural feel-good hormone that reduces stress, anxiety and depression, all of which affect sleep. He also said that supplements like Helmilex, which contain Venetron and Zembrin, help too. Zembrin is one fr from a South African flower that has been used both historically by tribes when they go hunting, they take it to help reduce their stress levels, but they have also used, uh, they have six clinical trials to help show that it can help with anxiety and mood and things like that. Or Venetron that also helps to have deeper, more high quality sleep and they have clinical trials to back that up as well. So, what does an immediate reset look like? Uh, so, one of the methods is uh, called deep breathing. So, essentially focusing on slowing down inhalation and ex exhalation. This will actually um, sort of increase the uh, thoracic space and reduces heart rate and it calms the amygdala as well. And then the second method would be something we call mindfulness practice. Uh, so this is essentially taking a moment uh, to stop and notice everything about one's senses. And the third thing is actually to name the emotion that you're feeling. Research has shown that just by naming the emotion, it actually activates the prefrontal cortex to calm down the amygdala. 
Well, it looks like I'll need more sleep after all. And thankfully, there are supplements and steps that I can take to make sure I have better sleep and my stress levels remain low. And if you're like me, then let's reclaim our rest and give our brains and bodies the rest that they deserve. Mahira Khan and Dinesh Kumar Maganathan, FMT.